Hey everybody, my name is Motoko and this is a Studio One video tutorial. Now, as you may have noticed, it's been quite a while since I last did one of these videos. Um, and to be honest, I didn't have any time for them. I've been extremely busy over the past few weeks, but I thought I'd put one out anyway um, because this is something that I see um, surfacing on the PreSonus forums quite a lot and there's quite some confusion about this subject as well um, and hopefully this video will clear it up a bit what am I talking about? I'm talking about 32-bit and 64-bit now that can relate to a couple of things um, and that's probably why it's confusing the hell out of a lot of people um, but you know, I've put together this little diagram um, and let me just walk you through it and hopefully that'll clear things up a bit. Um, on the left side, under the 32-bit text, I have a co I've set up a column that um, is 32-bit all the way. The first thing that you'll run into when discussing 32 versus 64-bit is your operating system and I've based this around Windows because both my systems run on Windows and I'm not quite sure how this works for the Mac platform but for Windows, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7 they all have two versions, a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version. Now the main difference apart from some small technical things the main difference is that all 32-bit software and that includes operating system and applications can only handle a maximum of four gigabytes of RAM and that's internal memory. Now if you have a computer that has eight gigabytes of RAM and you're still using a 32-bit operating system then you're basically only using half of your memory. Now if you want to use all that memory space um, you will need to run a 64-bit operating system so basically Windows 7 comes in two flavors 32-bit and 64-bit and if you're talking about operating system that's it one can handle less than or a maximum of 4 gigabytes of RAM and the other one can handle an excess of 4 gigabytes of RAM now the next level where 32-bit and 64-bit um, is mentioned is on the application and in this case we are talking about Studio One. Now both the artist and the pro version of Studio One come as a 64-bit or 32-bit version. Well what does that mean? Basically it means that if you have a 32-bit operating system you can only run a 32-bit application. If you have a 64-bit operating system you can run a 64-bit application and this middle column I'll get to that in a bit now there's another level where the whole 32 versus 64 bit discussion takes place and that's in the plugins now studio one does not have a built-in bit bridge and what does that mean that basically means that if I have the 32 bit version of studio one I can only use 32 bit plugins if I have the 64 bit version of studio one I can only use 64-bit plugins. As you can see right here, 64, 64, 64, 86, which is basically 32 uh, in terms of, of bit. Um, again, 32-bit application, 32-bit plugins. Now that's all pretty straightforward. Now we get to two things that are a bit confusing or where it starts to get a bit shady. One of the main things that are causing confusions is the is this thing called the audio engine. Now any version of Studio One Pro and that can be a 32-bit version or a 64-bit version can have its audio engine run either on 32-bit or 64-bit. 
Now, I know this sounds confusing, but look at it this way. In the heart of Studio One lies the audio engine. And the audio engine does a lot of calculations on audio information. Let's say I'm running at 32 bit inside the audio engine. That means that I can do calculations, for example, in integers. That means I can do two times two equals four. Now, although the calculations is ac are accurate, um, there's not much detail in those calculations because I'm working with whole numbers. What happens if I switch the internal workings of the audio engine to 64-bit precision? That means I get a whole range of detail I can use in my calculation. And instead of using 2 times 2, I can do calculations, for example, like 2.15 times 2.15. 34769 and that gives me a much more detailed result now why would you want to use 64-bit precision in your audio calculations um, there's not a big chance that you're actually going to hear the differences but the main advantage of having a more detailed calculation is that you are less likely to run in miniature faults or miniature errors in the audio information Let's just say that the calculation precision of the audio engine has nothing to do with the operating system. It has nothing to do with Studio One 32 or Studio One 64-bit version. And it has nothing to do with 32-bit plugins or 64-bit plugins. The audio engine precision has only to do with the audio precision. Um, and it is confusing because they also indicate the precision with 32 and 64 bit. But that is actually a different discussion than what we have here in the operating system and host. You can also compare it a bit to the term 90 degrees. Now 90 degrees can mean 90 degrees in temperature. But 90 degrees can also mean 90 degree angle of a corner. Now in both situations you call it 90 degrees because that's what it is but it means basically something different. And that's also what's happening here. Um, again this has nothing to do with your operating system or the version of Studio One you're running um, bitwise uh, because this 30 uh, this 64 bit precision is only available in the pro version of Studio One but it has everything to do with the precision of the calculations and the detail of the calculations that are done by the audio engine. So hopefully this clears this up a bit. Now there's one column that I really didn't go into all that uh, detail yet, and that's this column. Because what's happening here, I have a 64-bit operating system, but I have a 32-bit host. Now on Windows, if you are running the 64-bit operating system, you can run either 64-bit or 32-bit applications. The 64-bit applications, just like the 64-bit operating system, can address more than 4 gigabytes of RAM. The 32-bit application has the same limitations as any 32-bit program, and that it can only use 4 gigabytes of RAM. But, like we saw in the example on the 32-bit host uh, operating system. If you are running a 32-bit version of Studio One, you can only use 32-bit plugins. Again, Studio One doesn't have a built-in bit bridge, so if you want to use 32-bit plugins inside the 64-bit version of Studio One, you will need something like JBridge, um, which I don't use because I personally don't like to introduce extra layers um, between plugins and hosts. Um, but from what I've seen on the forums, a lot of people seem to like it. Um, so let's just look at this 64 bit operating system picture a little closer. There's two versions of Studio One that can run on the single operating system. 
Um, the good thing is you can install these side by side. As you see here in this overview, we have a program files folder. That's for the 64-bit applications. And we have a program files x86. And that's for the 32-bit applications. Because Studio One, each version will be installed in its own f uh, programs files folder, they can coexist within the same operating system without any problem. Which means that you can have one version running the 32-bit plugins, the other version running the 64-bit plugins. They can make use of a single source. Now, inside Studio One, you can set your user data folder, which contains the demos and tutorials, the presets, the projects, your songs, sound sets, the sound fonts, and the templates. You can set that location for both versions of Studio One, so you will only have to install the sound sets and all that stuff just once. Due to the way Windows is built, and the fact that Studio One is a pretty much self-contained application, and the fact that you will be installing two versions on two different locations, you will need to do a double configuration, which means that all the properties inside Studio One are exclusive for that version of Studio One. So um, if I um, configure one version of Studio One to look in a certain location, let's say for the VST plugins, then I will need to configure the other version as well to look at whatever location I want it to look at. The same goes for the authorization or the registration. Because these applications are in different folders, they need to be registered specifically, which means that once you have registered your 32-bit version of Studio One, you've installed a 64-bit version, then you re will need to reauthorize that. Um, because you're registering or activating on the same operating system, you can use the license file of either of those versions to license the other version, which means that out of your five activations that you have, you will only use one activation for both 32-bit and the 64-bit version of Studio One.